for me, I feel a deep appreciation for Thailand, mm -hmm. for Thai culture, and I feel very lucky to have the chance to have come here. A Falun Gai singing in Thai, a little more unique. More unique. Mm -hmm. But what I sing is called Thai Luk Tung, mm. and that is the local Thai folk music or Thai country music. That is very unique. Welcome to Thailand today. I'm Kusuma Yotasumut. There are hundreds of thousands of expatriates living in Thailand, many of whom are long term residents. Many foreigners learn to speak fluent Thai and some have a good command of local dialects. The more determined foreigners can also manage some popular and easy Thai songs. Foreigners who stick around love Thailand, Thai people and Thai food. They, however, earned a living doing what they do best. Singing is obviously off limit to foreigners, most notably Westerners. As, as, Sam Song, as the, a Swedish man has defined the odds thanks to his lifelong love with Thai language. Thailand today is delighted to have a Mr. Jonas Anderson, a Swedish singer of Thai Luk Tung. He's a celebrity in his own right, so he needs no introduction but he will tell us about his love with the charming Thai language and his singing career. Please join me to welcome Mr. Jonas Anderson. He's a Swedish folk singer. But, uh, well, it's not only that uh, this is the, the period of uh, uh, Thai New Year or Songkran, and we are to talk about a man, a Swedish man, has defied the odds, and then he is a lifelong love with the country, with the language. Here is Mr. Jonas Anderson. Sawadikra. 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 Welcome to Thailand today. Thank you. <laughs> I feel welcome to Thailand every day. Every day. day. <laughs> but at Thailand Today's program, this is the first time, and I'm very honored. Thank, Thank you, you very much. First, Mr. Anderson, tell me. Many Thai rushed to go to Sweden to live there, to get married. Why are you here? Well, uh, maybe sometimes it's human mm. nature. Mm -hmm. Human nature, we tend to think of other things as better than what we have. Mm. For example, mm. if you're blonde haired, you want black hair. <laughs> But okay. if you have black hair, you want blonde hair. Uh, <laughs> if you have uh -huh. dark skin, you want fair skin. And all those uh -huh. white people, they come here to get tanned skin. Tanned it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so maybe sometimes uh -huh. we appreciate other things than what we have. Uh -huh. For me, I feel a deep appreciation for Thailand, mm -hmm. for Thai culture. And I feel very lucky to have the chance to have come here. Mm. I didn't come here by choice to start. Mm. I moved here with my family when I was a kid. I didn't mm. even know hardly mm. where I was going. Mm. But uh, once I had the chance to be here, grow up here, mm then I feel very lucky mm. to have the chance to be in Thailand and I don't feel any need to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. To me, Thailand is such a complete location. It has everything. It's perfect. Well, take it as a compliment to the Thai people. <laughs> anyway, so uh, now what is your status? Just living here as a what? As a foreigner? Yes, I'm still a foreigner. Uh, so how do you do? You have to do extension of your I, visa? I do a yearly visa a extension year uh -huh. and a yearly renewal of my work permit oh, wow. to allow me to work and live Where in Thailand. Where are your parents now? My parents lived in Thailand for 10 years oh. and then moved back to Sweden. Okay. They're now in Sweden. Especially there in Sweden. Yes. But how did you feel about my son back there about 10, 20, 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> and uh, no, reveal your age now. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's so right. uh, how do you feel about it, that you are here, uh, continue your well, uh, career? My parents moved here when I was nine, nine mm. years old, basically, and they lived here about 10 years. 
After that, they, they had to move back. Mm. But I was a young adult, mm -hmm. 19, 20 years old. I, I really enjoyed my work in Thailand at mm -hmm. the time, my mm -hmm. opportunities, my uh, just being here. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to move back. Mm -hmm. And they supported my decision. Mm -hmm. In fact, they didn't really want to move back either. Oh, <laughs> they yes. were quite attached to Thailand and they uh. liked it here. They wanted to stay, but... Uh. Uh, circumstances mm. were that they needed to go. Mm. So they were supportive of my decision to stay. Mm. Now, since then, suddenly I have a music career. Mm. Mm. Came out of nowhere. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and they're very proud of their son mm. uh, having success and popularity in Thailand. Mm. And, and they understand. They understand me being here and, and support that. Of course, Parents always miss their kids, uh -huh, and course. I miss them as my parents. And they but, do, they uh, do visit sometimes. Yeah, they visit here. I visit there. I was just there, actually. Uh, I was just in Sweden uh -huh. uh, twice over the last six months. So I do get to go and see them, and they come here to see me. And uh -huh. so. Were you back there? Is there any Swedish people know you? Some do, but most don't really catch it or uh -huh. don't really recognize uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. Here in Thailand... Uh, the phalang, the uh. white guy, you know, <laughs> people kind of take notice, you know, they see a phalang, uh, just any phalang, and they look a little bit, you know, uh -huh. and then they see, hey, hey, wait, no, it's yeah. Jonas, uh -uh. but there, all of them are phalang, phalang. <laughs> so, so I don't <laughs> stand out that much, uh -huh. but some do, mm -hmm. just, uh, just coming back from Sweden mm -hmm. just a f couple days ago, uh, on the plane, there was a Swedish guy, mm -hmm. he recognized me. Mm -hmm. First, he heard me talking Thai on the phone. Okay. So he said, hey, this mm -hmm. is unusual. And then he noticed me and says, oh, this is Jonas, we heard. Because there's been a lot of news coverage about me about in Sweden. You. Yeah, many of you hearing from him. Do you want to know more about him? Uh, what is his marriage status? <laughs> With the young, energetic, handsome Mr. Jonas. So what's yours? My marriage status. That's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot reveal this really? because all my Thai fans would run away. <laughs> but this is not for a Thai fan, but... No, but they might see. Really? They might okay. find out anyway. <laughs> okay, let's skip it off then. Okay. So who is Jonas Anderson? Okay, Jonas Anderson. Well, uh, I'm from Sweden, as mm -hmm. we already established, mm -hmm. and I sing in Thai. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have been singing in Thai for uh, professionally for almost 16 years now. Cool. And uh, first of all, a Falang guy in Thailand mm -hmm. singing, mm -hmm. maybe not so unique. Mm, yes. Uh, a Falang guy singing in Thai, a little more I'm unique. More unique. Yeah. But what I sing is mm. called Thai Luk Tung. Mm. And that is the local Thai folk music or mm. Thai country music. Mm. That is very unique. Mm, In fact, course. there's only mm. one guy who does it. Mm. <laughs> one guy and one girl mm. that are fully white, fully falang uh, like uh, us. And, and so perfect Thai. Uh, so what did you choose? Did you, did you choose that to make the Thai folk or a normal, or what do you call modern Thai, modern like, Thai, Thai music. music? Well, to be honest, it was by chance more. Mm. Uh, my career began when mm -hmm. uh, I was kind of forced mm -hmm. to learn a Thai Luk Tung or Thai country song. But you were living there. Uh, I was in Thailand, yeah, uh -huh. and uh, I, I started with music uh, with a group of artists, a group uh -huh. of performers mm -hmm. who were not, well, mixed, some mm -hmm. Thai, some non-Thai. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were mostly performing for charity. We did shows at schools, mm. uh, like anti-narcotic programs. Mm. We did sh shows for the underprivileged, the poor, mm. the sick mm. in hospitals. Mm. Uh, when there were some natural disasters, mm. mm -hmm. we would go and use music to cheer people up, mm. to uh, bring hope. Mm. Uh, so I never really thought of being a singer, like professionally. Mm. I always thought, well, this is what I like to do. I do charity work. I use music. It's a unique approach. And uh, we sang, our repertoire was like some pop songs, mm. famous songs in mm. Thailand, like, mm. I don't know if any of the viewers know Bird Tong Chai. Of course. <laughs> some you do and some uh, of you don't, don't but uh, uh, he's a very, very big pop idol in Thailand. Uh, so I sang a few of his songs. Uh, uh, the girls would sing some other Thai female singer songs uh, uh, and all that. 
but we never did Luk Tung. Mm. Uh, Luk Tung, to me, seemed out of my range, out of my oh. reach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard a lot of Luk Tung when I was young mm -hmm. uh, because my family moved to Korat, mm -hmm. Nakonratasima, in the northeast mm -hmm. of Thailand, Thailand when I was yes. little. So there, mm -hmm. of course, you hear mm -hmm. country music, Luk Tung country music all the time. Mm -hmm. But never did I think I would actually sing that. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, whatever's mm -hmm. popular. But then one time, someone said, hey, we have an event, we need you to sing mm -hmm a Thai country song. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, oh my no. God. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what am I going to do? Uh, but, uh, you know, the spirit of an artist, you have to try. Uh, you can't quit. So uh, I got the song. At that time, it was like videotape, you know, the uh, big VHS uh, tapes, you know. Uh, and I put it on. I looked at the karaoke at the bottom uh, and tried to memorize, tried to copy it. I think it wasn't that good. Oh, yes. <laughs> not it's not that good. The original wasn't good? Or no, your, mine. Your, your, okay. The original was great. Mine uh, was not that good. Uh, uh, but I did it, you uh, know. Uh, Sadang spirit. Oh, <laughs> okay. It was uh, trying to uh, show to spirit, show you know. The, uh, so, mm -hmm. the reaction was amazing. Mm -hmm. People loved it. I got, you know, these garlands. Yes. Oh, Big lots. ones, you know, oh, for the first time. You see that. And lots of people screaming, people clapping like, oh, mm -hmm. I thought, hey, this is something unique. Uh, this is something special. Uh, After that, I, I started being more interested in it, like copying it or mm. trying to learn it. Mm. So I learned a few songs and eventually this type of music opened the door for me to go on very big TV shows. Mm. Mm. Uh, one especially very big TV show is called At Ten. Mm. Very huge mm. viewership. Mm -hmm. uh, after I was on that show with a Luk Tung song, the mm. next day, people recognized Whoa. me. Mm. The next day, all over the place. You were shocked. Uh, yeah, I was so surprised. Mm -hmm. How come people know me all mm -hmm. of a sudden? Mm -hmm. you know? And then that led to different uh, record companies, mm -hmm. uh, labels wanting to do albums with me. Mm -hmm. So you and your family uh, were well uh, exposed to Thai culture. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. so what about, uh, you know, the, our culture to you, the Thai culture threat to you? Well, to me, Thai culture is a national treasure. Mm -hmm. It's a very special and unique thing, mm -hmm. which uh, I think gives Thailand a lot of character. Mm -hmm. It gives Thailand a special charm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the main thing is that Thai culture is so diverse. Mm -hmm. There's, in the music field, there's almost an endless amount of Thai cultural experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, in the food, there's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. endless amounts of food. You go to mm -hmm. the north or the south or the northeast and it's like a whole new set of cuisine mm -hmm. in every area. Mm -hmm. Or if it's uh, art, you know, like graphic arts, mm -hmm. uh, sculpture, uh, all that kind of thing. It's, it's very intricate. Mm -hmm. Thai artists are very patient. Mm -hmm. I, I sometimes, I can't believe how they can be so patient mm, to in writing? sculpt and ah. do bas reliefs so carefully and very intricate and so beautiful. Ah. You, like, you, you can sing, you can speak very well, but can you write? I write some, not perfectly. Mm -hmm. I didn't, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I never went to school in Thailand. Mm -hmm. I, di I didn't officially study Thai. I mm -hmm. just uh, had an appreciation for it, tried to learn it, tried to learn how to read and write. Mm -hmm. I read Thai quite fluently. Mm -hmm. When I get songs, I always get them in Thai, mm -hmm. not, in, not in karaoke language, oh. not in the phonetics. No, mm -hmm. it's always in Thai yes. because that's more precise. Mm -hmm. You have a special interest and love to the Thai and develop yourself while you're staying here. We have heard a few times that uh, he also attached to the initiative of His Majesty the King, which is very important for a foreigner who just go deep to know more, to, to charm people by that. So can you tell us about the impression and what you come into it? What part did you come into that part? Of it? Well, I would say that even if you don't go very deep, mm -hmm. even if you're at a very surface level and mm -hmm. you study his, Majesty, His mm -hmm. Majesty the King's projects, mm -hmm. you'll already be very impressed. Mm -hmm. Because His Majesty works 
tirelessly, mm. with sincerity, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And in now we're almost at 70 years of His Majesty's mm -hmm. rule. Mm -hmm. In that time, He has initiated and conducted over mm -hmm. 4,000 projects. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine every year how mm -hmm. many projects that is, non-stop, just goes on and goes on and goes on. And uh, I've had the privilege of going a little deeper, mm -hmm. studying a little more at an mm -hmm. in-depth level what mm -hmm. His Majesty the King has done for mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. Which and way? Which way? In which way did you get into it? Well, uh, because of some of the activities I've done have been with organizations that follow up on His Majesty's projects, mm -hmm. the, the, that continue to conduct them, to make mm -hmm. sure that they keep going, that mm -hmm. do studies, to mm -hmm. uh, see what the progress is, and of course they have to report it to His Majesty's mm -hmm. office as well. Mm -hmm. So I see a little more. Mm -hmm. And very little of what he does is political. It's all development. It's all development, it's all improvement for the country, like, like water management, mm -hmm. water treatment, exactly. uh, forestry, mm. uh, the amount of projects. And it's not just doing a project for the sake of doing it. Uh, His Majesty's insight and understanding at an academic level is amazing. Mm. He's a genius. I mean, mm. he, he studies at such a deep level mm -hmm. everything that he mm. does. And there's a lot of... <laughs> interaction with mm. the local people. Mm. Uh, I have heard from people who work with His Majesty's projects that if, if any of the local people resist mm. the project, he will not force it. Mm. He'll say, okay. Mm. He'll present mm. it. Mm. He tries to educate them about how the benefits mm. are of this project. Mm. If they, they don't want it, mm. that's okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, in the south of Thailand, mm. His Majesty initiated a water management project. Exactly. And one side, one village, mm. they went for it. Mm. They wanted it. Mm. The other side, another village, they resisted it. it. They resisted decided, it. Okay. no, we don't uh, want it. Uh -huh. So, that's okay. His Majesty's staff initiated the project for the one group, the but not the other group. Uh, uh -huh. In the end... Uh, what happened is the mm. ones who didn't accept the project got <laughs> flooded terribly. Oh, yes. And the others survived the flood mm. perfectly well mm. and fine. So you can see that it's not, it's not some arbitrary thing that's just done like that. Yes, There's a lot exactly. of study and thinking mm. and, and, and follow-up mm. on each project and interaction with the local people. Mm -hmm. You've been receiving many awards, and one of that is right here. So yes. can you tell us about this award, please? Well, actually, this is the latest award I received, which is a very prestigious r r award. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. called Dao Mekala. Dao Mekala. Dao yes. Mekala. Uh, Mekala uh. is a Thai mythological uh. character, uh -huh. right? Yes. And... Uh, this is presented to a lot of artists and mm. people working in the entertainment field. Mm -hmm. uh, I just received this on the 30th of March, mm -hmm. uh, very, very recently. Yes. And um, it was for the category of uh, excellence in singing Luk Tung. Mm. So I'm very proud of this because the people who received the award with me at the same time were very, very popular, very established Thai singers. Mm -hmm and also other artists and actors and celebrities. Mm. Uh, so uh, it's a great honor for me to be able to receive this award. It was presented by the Thai uh, Entertainment mm. Journalist mm. Association, mm. which is under royal patronage. Yes. Uh, they have been giving out the... This is Dao Mekala. It's a, a mm. little bit of a newer award. Mm. Previous, they have just been Mekala, Mekala Award. Yes, That's yes. been... 50 something years already. Mm -hmm. So it's a very prestigious award. My last question is to you, Mr. Anderson. Yes. This moment, is this what the dream come true or this is what the, the topmost, the highest in your life? Well, uh, I think we have to keep dreaming. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we should never plateau and then stop. Mm. Uh, if, we, if we feel satisfied where we are, we won't push further, mm. go higher. Uh, I don't think it's just about ambition. It's about every day, be the best that you can. Do what you can, the best you can. I would love to do a whole lot more. Uh, 
maybe work in television. I would love to do more acting. You know, there's a lot more I can do. I want to yeah. produce more music too. Last but not least, my dear uh, wisdom viewers, we are delighted to show Mr. Jonas Anderson some of the Thai folk songs. Oh. And uh, which you like the best. And I think I have the best. <laughs> and I love it. It's, I personally love the particular song. Oh, thank so you. Please do. I'll sing it now, right? Yes, please. Okay. Let well. me clap. <laughs> thank you, Kap. Kap Kun Ma Kap. Well, my latest single is called Guang Kao Yu Glang Kao. That sounds like a little bit nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> difficult. Guang really Kao, difficult. the white deer, uh -huh. Yu Glang Kao, is in the middle of the mountains. Uh -huh. The point is not the meaning of the words. The point of this song is that this song is full of tongue twisters tongue twisted in song. Thai, all mm -hmm. packed together mm -hmm. <laughs> in one verse. Mm -hmm. So it's very very difficult. I think okay. I can say confidently this was the most difficult song I it ever is. had to learn. I agree at the Thai. <laughs> I do agree and I wouldn't be able to sing as much as you do. Please, please, okay. quickly, quickly. There are warm welcome smiles here to greet you. Lots of beautiful ladies to meet you. Fantastic food is here to entice you. Exotic place is sure to excite you. Come and see, it's really amazing. Make your dreams reality. Come and learn the songs they sing. Just start out with this few words with me. Guang Kao, you Guang Kao, by Guang Kao, Guang Kao, then Ma. Yala, Ma, Rayong, Lao Kin Long, Rong Rayong, Yala. Yai Kin Nam, Lam Yai, Nam, Lai Yai, Lai Yoi, Rot Yak, Loi Tani, Plai, We Heo, Lio, We Deo, Hi, We Heo, Pai, Hi, We Heo, Ma. เช้าฝัดฝัดฝักเหยียนฝัดฝักผัดผัดผักขาวชามเขียวข้างขวาความเช้าชามขาวความค่ำความค่ำความค่ำชามขาวไก่หมูมือกุ้งหุงอุ่
is important cultural heritage that needs greater appreciation. Thank you for watching Thailand today. I'm Kusumayo Tasmo. Talk to see you again next time. Swadika.